Well, there's not a lot worth saying about this match at the Dubai City International Cricket Stadium. Scotland were thoroughly defeated by Ireland by 37 runs. It started badly when Ireland went to 21 for no wicket after just two overs. There were two wickets each for Majid Haq and Kyle Kurtzer. Three catches for Fraser Watts. Scotland did well to pull it back, so Ireland's total was only 136 for seven at the end of their innings. Scotland's reply got off to an even worse start, with two wickets falling in the first over, both Watts and Hamilton departing, with the score on six. And in the second over, another two wickets fell. Barrington and McCallum both going for ducks. By the time the fourth over had finished, Stander had gone as well. And from that unpromising position of 15 for five wickets, Scotland could never recover. However, Kyle Kurtzer and Gordon Drummond enjoyed a 60-run partnership. <laughs> Kurtzer was the highest scorer with 43, and he certainly looked disappointed not to go on and make his 50. To finish off uh, with a defeat to Ireland is always disappointing, but uh, there were a few highlights in that game. Yeah, I think that uh, yeah, the, uh, the bowling, particularly of uh, Kyle Kutzer, has been a bit of a, re a revelation on this, uh, in this tournament, in this format of the game. Uh, he, he's a very competitive player and, and you know, ultimately he, he wants to do really well for Scotland and he wants to just add value in any way he can. So, yeah, he, he was excellent on that particular day and, and also uh, Majin Hack you know, put in a really good spell and you know, to finish with you know, a couple of wickets and only going for you know, in the teams uh, of his four overs was a fantastic effort. So you know, he's very competitive, he's done well against Ireland uh, recently and uh, you know, we're hoping that uh, they'll, be, they'll continue. I think he's, he's worked hard in his game but he's also worked hard in his fitness and, and that's showing he, he's got through this entire tour, we've been away for a month now and he's got through the whole tour uh, in good shape. And also, once again, not unusually, some pretty good uh, fielding performances, catching. Yep, we've, uh, we've caught well in this tournament. Uh, the last two games in particular, I thought the uh, field and also with the ball, we've, we've done really well and been very competitive. And you know, to keep Ireland and Afghanistan to you know, the mid 130s in a 20 over competition on, on good tracks is, is a good effort. And I think that uh, you know, coaching staff and the players have worked really hard on, on addressing that and uh, you know, it's been good to see. But the batting was a pretty uh, horrific show at the start of the innings yesterday. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're 5 for 12, but you know, we, we knew that we had to get the, uh, the 136, 137 runs in, in uh, 14 and a bit overs. So you know, 
we decided that uh, we were going to go for that and uh, give it our best shot and it didn't work out guys edged and, and went to fielders and, and stuff like that and, and guys went out there with a positive intent because of that you know we, we did lose a few wickets but you know then good partnership between uh, Gordon Drummond and uh, Kyle Kutzer and it, it gave us a sniff of, of actually winning the game um, and unfortunately we just you know we paid for those uh, five wickets up front really. But uh, batting throughout the uh, T20 warm-up period and uh, the competition itself, with the exception of the game against Uganda, the batting has lacked consistency. Is that really what the problem is? I think that uh, you know we can definitely look at it. And, and in Kenya, uh, the two games against Kenya, we, we struggled with you know bad and ball, to be honest with you. Uh, but we turned that around in terms of the bowling, the fielding, uh, when we got here to Dubai, and, and that's been good, as we said earlier. But I think that uh, the batting-wise, you know, we've struggled in the first six overs, and uh, unfortunately, if you do that, then it's hard to come back from. And in 2020 cricket, two, three overs missed, uh, you know, or a couple of wickets fall, then it's very difficult to come back from. So it is an area that we've got to work on, and uh, it's an area that we're sort of, you know, really working hard to sort of address. Ultimately, it comes back to the question: Did you have the right players for the task? I think whenever you, you set about selecting a team for any particular tournament or any particular game, you, know, you have a look at what you got and you, you go with a, uh, a decision and, and that's based very much on logic and uh, you know, selectors felt that you know, we got the right 14 players here and we can look back in hindsight and say well you know, maybe this player, maybe that player but you know, ultimately you know, we believe we had the right players um, and unfortunately in terms of the competition itself you know, we've, we've come away with uh, with three losses, and we're, we're disappointed. We're really disappointed about that. So, what what happens next? I mean, is there a formal post mortem, or, or what what happens? I think uh, everyone everyone wants an inquest after <laughs> every uh, you know sort of poor performance, I guess. And you know, we'll we'll have a look at it, and you know, obviously, there's going to be opportunities for new players over the next coming months, and you know, those opportunities. I'm sure will be uh, will be taken, and and you know we've got to look to identify really the probably the 15, 16 players who we think demonstrate the right character and the right fight uh, to take us forward, and you know we're working hard to do that. I think the point I'm making here is we're, we're doing quite well at uh, the Intercontinental Cup four-day game format, but it was a completely different set of players really that came for the T20. Mm -hmm. Will there be? Uh, much more convergence between the two in the future do you think? I think that you know there's a number of different reasons for for the fact that there are different uh, different squads one is different format of the game uh, some players are more suited to the longer form of the game and then you've got the other players who are the specialists in, in the shorter format but you know we've also got this situation with work commitments very difficult to get a, you know a lot of guys away for a whole month and I'm sure that you know some of the, the guys who have been on this 2020 would have competed for a place in the, in the four-day team, but we might not have then got them available for the rest of the season. So yeah, there's a lot of different issues there. I'm really pleased with the uh, the progress of the four-day squad. Well, we have three more Intercontinental Cup games coming up against uh, the Netherlands, Afghanistan, and Zimbabwe somewhere in Africa uh, in the autumn. Uh, what else is there to look forward to in uh, the coming season? Well, we've got the, the Pro 40 uh, competition against English counties. We've got more games this year than we've had previously, so 12 games, that'll be good. Different format of the game as well. Um, I, I quite like the 40 over format. I think it'll uh, hopefully sort of teach us the ability to sort of get on with things just a little bit quicker, learn to develop a game that we can transfer into 50 over cricket. And then we've also got a lot of ODI, ODI cricket this year. Um, you know, we've got the World Cricket League and we've got internationals against England. We've also got international against uh, Bangladesh. So, you know, there's a lot of cricket left to go. You know, there's a lot of cricket. There'll be a lot of opportunities. And, you know, for me, it's about sort of finding those players who are, who are really desperate to, to fight to, to change the results that we've had of late and uh, turn things around.